taking a look at this table on slide 52, we see that all dozen of these container types support forward iterators. That is, they support all of the necessary operations shown for forward iterators here on slide 53. Let me clean up this blast of highlighting that I just did. As a special case, the maps, map and multi-map, unordered map and unordered multi-map, since these containers contain pairs, then any iterator that you have will be able to access the first element of the pair, which is the key, and the second element of the pair, which is the value. Now bidirectional iterators have to support decrementing an iterator, that is both pre-decrement and post-decrement of the iterator. You can't do decrementing of a forward list iterator, and likewise you should assume that you can't do decrementing of an unordered containers iterator. Implementations are apparently allowed to support decrement for unordered containers, but since it's not a requirement, you're much better off assuming that that's not available. And then finally, random access iterators support subscript, as we've seen. You can also subtract one iterator from another to find out how many elements exist between those two iterators. You can add arbitrary integers or subtract arbitrary integers. You can do plus gets and minus gets. And you can do relational comparisons on these iterators, more or less as though these iterators really were pointers. Now, among these dozen container types in the standard library, the only ones that support random access iterators are vector and dec. You can add or subtract integer offsets from vector and dec iterators. You can use subscripting and subtraction on vector and dec iterators. And you can do relational comparisons of vector and dec iterators. But none of these other 10 standard container types support the random access facilities. Here on slide 54, we point out again something that I said before, which is that the pre-increment and pre-decrement operators on iterators are more efficient than the post-increment and post-decrement. So you should get in the habit of preferring pre-increment in things like for loops rather than post-increment in the change expression. Why is there this efficiency difference? Well, in a pre-increment, the increment happens first and then you use the modified value afterwards. So you only have to have one object sitting around. You, you add to it and then you use it. In post-increment though, remember that the incrementing only happens after you make use of the value. So you have this odd thing going on in post-increment that you have to sort of make this temporary copy of what the original iterator was and then you increment the underlying actual iterator. So this doesn't look like a big deal but it does entail actually creating a copy of an iterator and unless you have some specific reason for needing that copy it's better to just not waste the time. Another thing I want to point out particularly with regard to random access iterators is that you need to be careful not to go ahead of the begin iterator or past the end iterator. In this example for loop I'm using an iterator to step through the elements of a vector. We know that a vector has a random access iterator. Therefore, we could compare whether our iterator is less than v9.end, which makes this look even more like a typical kind of for loop that we would use with an integer subscript or with a pointer. The problem here is, if I do something like adding 2 to my iterator, that's permitted because the iterator is a random access iterator, but what if adding 2 to my iterator jumps past v9.end? Is v9.end plus 1 going to be greater than v9.end? Well, once you're outside the bounds from dot .begin through dot .end, all bets are off. It's undefined whether the value of v9.end plus 1 is greater than or equal to or less than v9.end. So you could accidentally create for yourself here 
an infinite loop or you could crash. Here on slide 56 we have some examples of using the random access iterator that you get with a vector and on slide 57 we have the output of this little bit of code. So v10 here is a vector of int. It happens to contain 10 values, 13579, a6420, and here we're declaring it as an iterator initialized to point to the beginning, that is to the initial element of that vector v10. Now, because random access iterators allow me to do subtraction, and when I do a subtraction, what I get is the number of elements between the two iterators. If I subtract from v10.end, this iterator, which currently is v10.begin, what I'll be told is that there are 10 elements between the end and the beginning. Recall that end is just beyond the final value of the vector, so if we were thinking of this in terms of integer subscripts, this would be the equivalent of subtracting a subscript of 0 from a subscript of 10, which is one too far. I can access the element that IT is pointing to. At this moment, that's the initial element in the vector, which of course is 1. Now, if I add 3 to my iterator, since this is a random access iterator, it behaves properly and simply shifts the iterator forward by three positions so that now if I use my subscript notation on the iterator this is a bit like using a subscript on a pointer the iterator is quote pointing at unquote the 7 so IT sub 0 at this point is 7 I can use negative subscripts just as I could if IT were an array or a pointer. IT sub minus 2 is the element that is 2 before the 7, which is going to be the 3. And if I set my iterator to the end minus 4, well, uh, the end is going to be just beyond the 0, so minus 1, 2, 3, 4. The end minus 4 is going to be pointing at the 6. Okay, so the subscripting, the subtracting, the plus gets, these are things that random access iterators can do that forward iterators and bidirectional iterators are not able to do. Okay, here in this table on slide 59, we're showing how to assign collections of values to a container, which will also have the effect of eliminating all of the values that the container used to contain we're seeing how to insert a value or a collection of values into a container which may move around but otherwise will leave unchanged the values that currently exist in the container we can erase individual values or sets of values specified by iterators and we can also remove all occurrences of some value or in the case of remove if all of the values that satisfy some boolean operand now, as you can see, not all containers support all of these capabilities. And some of the containers support some of these capabilities in a slightly modified way. Let's take a look at what this asterisk is about on slide 60. Okay, first of all, notice all the asterisks that we've got here on these forward list operations. In a forward list, you only have forward iterators so you cannot, for example, move to a particular element in the forward list and then insert a new value ahead of that existing value. If you have an iterator for an element in the forward list, then in order to insert a new value there would entail modifying the previous element in the forward list, and that would require going backwards, which you cannot do. So for the forward list, instead of insert and erase we have insert after and erase after. 